Please remain seated. The show will begin in three, two. Like a hell cut. <laughs> Some content. Like and subscribe now. I saw a flash of lightning shoot across the sky, and a creature burst out of the darkness. A gaunt, bony, ugly thing with bat like wings, long black hair, and these fiery red eyes. It just had an upper body with these lengthy arms and sharp claws, these pearly white razors for teeth. It outstretched its thin, black tongue that swayed in where the lower torso should have been. There were dangling intestines, and I just felt sick, very dizzy, and I couldn't bring myself to run anymore. I stayed frozen in place. This thing just looked down at me, and it inched closer. I was facing death, and I didn't know what to do. I then found my strength, picking up this huge rock and chucking it at the monster. It struck the thing in the face and the monster shrieked so loud. It rang in my ears and it made my head ache. I then bolted back to my grandmother's hut and I could see the front door was busted off the hinges and these huge claw marks. I then saw my brother Dennis at the top window of the hut and I met his eyes. He was afraid and I knew he could see I was scared too. I ran inside and it looked like a tornado had hit the entire place. Furniture was torn to shreds, some of which was toppled over, and blood splatters were on the walls and left a fresh trail on the wood floor, into the kitchen, to the upstairs as well, and I saw another pair of muddy footprints, and these were different from the ones before. They were like backwards. I frantically ran up to my brother and I asked him where were the others. He just kept muttering a word, a word that wasn't easy to understand at first. I asked him again about where the others had gone, and he stammered out the word, Mandamungal. I arched an eyebrow. I approached him hesitantly, and I then asked him, What are you talking about? Dennis shivered uncomfortably and pulled me close to him. He then described the creature to me, the same thing I saw out in the field. Dennis admitted to me that on the first night we stayed at our grandmother's hut, he saw it too when he found the passageway that led to grandmother's room. I was shocked. I was absolutely mortified. He then brought up the term Aswang. Aswang and Manmungal are similar in some ways. They are both vampiric by nature. Manmungals generally target sleeping pregnant women and devour the infant from outside of the navel area with their long black tongues. After tranquilizing the expectant woman, sometimes with an Oswang, they are depicted to be scaly skinned and bald and can be both male or female, devour adults or children while in other cases the Manamangal specifically is a thing that can be described as a beautiful female that hunts other females that are newly pregnant or about to give birth to an offspring. Oswangs have their feet on backwards. And the way to know if an Oswang is near you is by looking at your own shadow or reflection. If it's upside down, you know you are in danger. And this is my older brother's words. He told me straight up that when he stared down at his own shadow, it was upside down. And this happened outside the public restrooms. It was just an hour before I even went outside. I then asked him if he knew where this thing came from. He wouldn't tell me. I asked him, do you know anything else about this monster? He only knew how to defend himself, he told me. He refused to tell me more than that. There is one method to surviving an attack from an Oswang. Scythes. Oswangs will avoid them. Madame Mongol's weaknesses are sprinkling salt on their lower torso. Doing so will kill the creature at sunrise. As long as you can find it in its hidden place. Setting the thing on fire, even smearing garlic, etc. My brother suggested we go look for the lower torso of the Man Mongol. I was hesitant, but he said the only way we had to protect our mother 
want us to destroy the Laura Torso. We didn't even know where to begin to look. We just searched aimlessly through the darkness. At the time of these events, my mother was pregnant and we found out sometime after my father had vanished. Throughout the years of their marriage, they tried having a third child. But due to health complications, as some of our relatives had said, she kept having miscarriages. But from the numerous doctor's appointments, there were no test results that stated officially or suggested that there was anything physically wrong with my mother. Aside from the heavy stress and financially we were having bad money problems, stress often is a common denominator in most cases with miscarriages. Then of course my mother's drug use nor alcoholism helped the situation either. We were strolling through the woods and we went deeper in. Heading south and the woods were vast and very large. The one thing that stood out was definitely the stench of decay and death. It wasn't unusual to find dead animals or remains of them out on the trail. We managed to find what we were looking for when we came across a clearing near a river. It was in fact a lower torso. Something about the details of it made me question whether my brother was being completely transparent about the whole situation. Whose lore torso this belonged to wore a purple skirt. And I looked at my brother, and he looked at me. I can't recall exactly who I'd seen wearing that skirt, or I can't be certain of 100%. I mean, anything was possible. I, I remember Dennis then saying to me, You know how Mother always complained about Grandmother not approving of her father and having us before marriage? I then nodded. Then Dennis said something that was very disturbing. Well, when father left, she said it was grandmother's fault, he continued. Mother also grew envious of other women who were able to conceive, and she always just sort of stared at them, followed them around, just gone obsessed with wanting to be a mother again. And well, she started ignoring me and you. It was like we weren't enough for her anymore. Dennis, are you saying mother is a... Before I could finish speaking, we heard the tick, 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 tick. Tick, tick. It was close by, but again, this only meant the thing was just farther away. We still had time, and so my brother had lit the torso on fire with a match before we ran back to the house. I then asked, What do we do now? He then replied, We wait till sunrise. We then realized our cousins were still missing. Did the Oshwan get them, I asked? I don't think so, said my brother. Do you know that for sure? I'm sure, okay? Let's just find a place to hide. We hid within these large woven baskets and we just waited. Once it got to 3 a.m., we heard scratching on top of the roof of the hut. We knew then it was an Oswong. We didn't dare move an inch or make a sound. We just kept listening to the scratching and it got louder and louder. We eventually dozed off and woke up the next morning around 9 a.m. We left the baskets and searched the house. There was no sign of our mother nor our grandmother. We at some point found our cousins at one of the neighbor's houses, and I asked them if they saw or heard anything. They didn't reply. I then asked the neighbor about it. They said they didn't know what I was talking about, said that my mother had left my cousins on their doorstep without reason. So we all just waited, hoping our mother would return. For the next three nights, my brother and I stayed awake. Hearing the scratching and tick-tick noises go on from 9 o'clock till 3 or 4 in the morning. During the day, we'd ride our bikes through the village. We'd go to the market and we'd carry on with life. We couldn't go back to our grandmother's house. We'd try to forget. We would try to forget what we saw. I wanted to erase the previous events from my mind. Our mother still hadn't come back. Grandmother was nowhere to be found. Everyone else would be staring at us or perhaps it's something from behind us. They seemed afraid, too. They knew something, too. They avoided us. We were followed all the time. I could feel eyes on me. I'd turn one corner and I'd see strange beings who look human, smiling back, and some were stoic, cold, malicious. Sometimes these figures would be positioned facing a wall, and their bare feet would be on backwards. At night, for an hour or so, when it would rain, I'd walk that same path and I'd stand on that same field. I would wonder if I imagined it at all. In my dreams, I continued to relive those moments. I'd see the blood, the, re the remains of various young women with their big stomachs ripped open. In my dreams, I'd see these bodies piled up in the village. 
I see creatures climbing on rooftops and ones with wings and upper torsos with intestines dangling, flying high in the sky, circling the huts. I then wake up and I'd be alone. I'd sit up in bed and I would think about my father. What happened to him? Did my grandmother do something that made him leave us? Did she hurt him? Did my mother really blame my grandmother for his disappearance? All I can tell you is my brother and I don't like to talk about it much. We lived with other relatives till we were able to afford school and housing once we became adults. We didn't go back to the Philippines, but the Philippines stayed with us. Those creatures torment me when I'm awake and when I'm asleep. I'd see them outside of my window of my bedroom. I still go out for night walks. I hear the tick ticks. They would sometimes be further away and sometimes close by. Recently, in the past couple of weeks, I have not experienced anything else. Hallucinations? Maybe. Am I crazy? Perhaps. I'd call my brother on the weekends and I'd ask about my mother. All he could tell me the last time we spoke on the phone was that she became one of them. A Mamamon Gall. She is responsible for those deaths of pregnant women and those missing fetuses. As for grandmother, she was an Oswang. That's why she kept to herself in her room. She was feasting on humans. My mother sacrificed her humility to prey on the women who could have the one thing she couldn't have. And my grandmother, for the past 30-something years now, turned into a monster and the means of exacting her revenge on the village she hated. This one night, maybe a month or so before, I took another late-night stroll in the park. I heard the noises, and they were far away. I looked down, and I did so reluctantly, seeing my shadow in front of me, and it was upside down.